Hello and today we will be installing Manjaro. It is an art based system which is really popular and pretty well made. So the video is pretty simple. You just have to get Manjaro and uh, boot it in a virtual machine or you can set it up in your own system with dual boot. It's really up to you however you want to do it. But if you are someone who is wanting to do this in a virtual machine then you can follow this uh, step by step and if you are someone who is trying to do this in a dual boot system or a dual boot scenario then you just have to change the first part where uh, instead of opening a virtual machine you will just make a bootable usb and the rest of the steps are basically the same so you don't have to change anything about those so first let's just get manjaro so if you just the heck wow what the heck is this no, I just want Manjaro. So if I just Google Manjaro, you can see there is a uh, link here, which is just manjaro.org. It's like kali.org. It's really simple. Then you can just hit this download button right here. And we're just going to do this. And as you can see, there is a bunch of version here. We have a Plasma Desktop, XFC, GNOME, Baji, Cinnamon. And if you know Linux, you know that you can just download either of these and just customize it however you want. You can get the Plasma and install XFC on it. You can get XFC and install GNOME on it. So it's really not that complicated. We will be going with the Plasma desktop because uh, I just like the look of it. But the other ones are basically the same. So then you just hit download and then it will uh, let you choose if you want the full version or the minimal version. It's really up to you. If you want every single software that comes with Manjaro, uh, I think there are some office softwares and some uh, drivers installed with it. But if you just want a bare min minimum install, or if you are low on storage, or maybe you are installing it in an older system, then the minimal is pretty good option. Then if you see here, you have uTorrent, you have image. So I will get the image because this will give you me an ISO file where the torrent will give me a torrent file. Then I can just get from uTorrent or another BitTorrent server that you prefer. But if you click on image and minimal, as you can see, it will download. And I am not downloading this right now. I already have this downloaded because my internet sucks and this will take forever. So then if I just, I just cancel this. But if I just minimize this as you can see there is a folder called manjaro here and the file is right here so i already have this downloaded and don't worry this is not some other version this is manjaro kde and this is the plasma desktop environment if, if you don't know kde is kde has the plasma desktop environment so if you see kde is basically the same thing as plasma so then uh, we open virtualbox and we create a new virtual machine. And here is where things will change depending on what you are trying to do. So if you are trying to do a uh, dual boot, then just make a bootable USB and there is a huge amount of tutorials on how to do that. And then just follow along after these steps and when we start to install. So let us name this Manjaro. And then just select the ISO image. Oops, let me just get to desktop. Manjaro, and there you go. And then uh, we'll just do this, change this to Arc Linux. You can do Arc Linux or just Linux in general. It will, it doesn't matter that much. Uh, you can do Linux this, this version, or you can do Arc Linux because Manjaro is based off of Arc, so it's almost the same. But uh, to keep things simple, let's just go with this one. Because it's like a generic Linux, so it will take anything. And then we go next. And then for RAM, I would recommend going over 4 GB. Uh, because that is a really good option for uh, Manjaro, you can even, I think you can use it in something low like 700 megabytes and it will still work. But 4 gigabytes is a good option. Uh, because as I said, Manjaro is based on Arc, so it's pretty lightweight. Uh, so, and I'm giving it 4 cores. Uh, 12 cores should be fine. 
But, you know, at that point, they were really stretching it for a virtual machine. But then, uh, you can use the EFI, but I don't like to use this. I just keep it however it is. It's really simple. And for the drive, I'll just give it 20 gigabytes. You can do 40. Or 40 or higher is better if you are trying to daily drive this and install it. Uh, mainly, though, you know what? I'll just give it 40 gigabytes. Why not? And then uh, the here we will get a quick overview on what we are doing. So it's really simple and you can just check over it and see if everything is open. okay. If everything is fine, you can just hit finish or you can go back and change if you find something that is not okay. So after I do finish, we, we can just start the machine. And then we can continue on to our installation. So let me just make this bigger. And oops. With open source drivers. And it will boot into a live environment. So I'll show you something. So in a virtual box, there is something a little bit weird that is really small. And I know there is a way how to change it, but I don't know how to change it. So if you have this issue where it's not showing the bottom part, you can, since this is a live system, you can just go to configure display settings and just change it to your resolution and apply. Then you basically have a full screen display and then just make it full screen and then Again, if you are using it, doing a dual boot, then this should be the thing that you're seeing. And if you're in a virtual machine or virtual box, then you can just go full screen and change the display resolution. And that's how you get the full screen. Now, if we check this, as you can see, it's huge and we have lots of space. So launch installer. Here's the Rua installer. Well, that sounds cool, man. Anyway, now you can do next, your location. Uh, I'm right here. Then next. And then this is your uh, keyboard layout. I don't know why I forgot that. But you can change it if you want. And here, uh, again, if you're doing dual boot, then you can just change whichever drive you want to install in. And if you do manual partitioning, it will show you options where you can partition this manually. And if we do next here, you can see it will give you option on what you want to version. So new partition table. So if it's MBR or GPT, whichever it is that you are installing. And then you can go from there. But for us, we're just erasing the entire disk and make Installing this on the drive. And if you are going manual partitioning, then I can assume that you have a minimum amount of knowledge on how Linux works. Because if you don't have any prior experience to working with Linux, I would not recommend you doing manual partitioning without a YouTube tutorial. But, yeah, here is the bootloader which you want to use. So let's go master bootloader. That's fine. And you can select if you want any swap or not. We'll just go no swap. Then next and then just uh, do your username. So there we go. And a simple password. Very secure password. <laughs> and then uh, I'll just log in automatically without asking for password. And then you can set a uh, root password. I'll just set it as the same. Right, next. And then here's the summary of what we are doing. Then install. Then if we do this, it will just start installing and then we can just continue from there. So after this is done, then we can see how Manjaro works. And this is basically how to install Manjaro. It's really easy. 
and this will depend on how fast your SSD is or your hard drive is. If it's really fast, this won't take too long. And there we go. That's basically it. We just hit restart now, then done. And it should boot into our new system. So let's just wait for it to boot up. So if you uh, get to this option right here, then what you can do is just close the virtual machine. So just close it. And then just remove the pen drive or the uh, ISO that you use. So get to storage and then just remove this. Uh, because that's basically like re like removing your pen drive and uh, hold up. I forgot where is that option? Oh yeah, yeah. Share to both by directional, and this should just let us drag and drop stuff. And so if we are if we now we are done here, we just have to start it again, and this time we will see it will just boot into our new system. So let me just wait for it. As you can see, it just directly booted into Manjaro this time. And then you select the auto login, it just logged in. Let's just stop this, then we just this, and then now we can do sudo Batman dash SYY or SY, whichever you prefer. And just update our repository to see whether well, everything is working. And our internet is working as well. So there we go. It's working. Now, here is a little bit of quick trick that you can use in Manjaro. It's a really handy thing to have and to really boost your internet speeds. So as you can see, it's going to 100, 300 kilobytes per second. And it's actually not that ideal, but uh, in here, if you go to this option right here, and then go to preference, and then just go to mirrors, and just select where you're from. Now, if you refresh the mirrors, then you'll, see you'll get a really good light. Like, really good speed so just wait for this to finish so this will refresh the mirror then just close this close this and it actually updates the mirrors in your terminal as well so if i do this now as you can see it's getting really higher like a lot higher speed so we're actually going to megabytes rather than kilobytes so it's a really, really good cool tricks that you should know and it's really handy like if you're new to this and this could help you a lot. And uh, it is mostly for terminal based commands, so it won't work with third party downloads or not in Firefox where you're downloading some uh, software. But if it's in the terminal or in repositories, it will download uh, much faster. So that's basically it. That's how you install Manjaro in VirtualBox. So if you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.